guys. Let's see what, what they have in store. What's up, guys? Wolf here. Welcome to another Division 2 video. In today's video, I'm going to showcase the live stream that we have just finished watching on the Division Game official Twitch page. We watched it together. It was a lot of fun. If you guys missed it, unfortunately, uh, you did miss quite a lot of hype, but we didn't get that much. We got some questions answered, some details about the roadmap of what's coming in the next couple of months or years a new apparel event that actually looks pretty good the developers did give us quite a lot of insight into what's coming but it was basically just kind of like a recap of the pts nothing too extravagant but some questions were answered regarding pvp and pve so definitely guys make sure you watch the full vod I'm going to play the whole thing from start to finish, so hopefully you guys do leave a like and subscribe. Make sure to watch the whole thing, it's quite detailed, and I didn't want to just talk about it. I might break down certain elements in uh, separate videos, but hopefully you guys do enjoy the full VOD. So enjoy it, make sure you leave a like, subscribe, and this week, the 12th is when it releases. Uh, the, the other things that we'll be releasing along the way afterwards, but... This week, I will be grinding, or this weekend, probably from Thursday, Expertise. I'm going to be doing a lot of live streams, so hopefully you guys do follow me on Twitch. Uh, and I will see you then. And I'll be seeing you in the next video, or in the next live stream. Peace out, guys. Uh-oh. Not going to make it, boys. Yes, I can. Solo with my, my pistol belt. <laughs> By myself. It is a bit more difficult though, to be fair. They did buff the health pools of the enemies. I tried it solo. I couldn't do it. It was very difficult. Life Lord. Hello everyone. My name is Daria. I'm the newcom dev for The Division 2. And we are here today to uncover all the secrets of TU15 and Season 9. And today with me is Yannick. Uh, you all know him very well. Ah, hi. <laughs> um, so, yeah, uh, it's very exciting. Uh, back to streaming. It's been a long time yes. for the game. I mean, it's, it's my first stream, so I'm good, <laughs> as I mentioned. But I know that is super exciting for the whole community and for the team as well. It's just so good to be live again, to just be able to talk to all of you and uh, the past weeks anyway have been just amazing. Like it's been, it's been a long time. I think I talked a bit about it with some people, but it's like, like it's been a long wait for, for you know, yes, all of you, very obviously, long. And, uh, and for everyone that loves the game. It's been a long wait for us as well. I mean, we've been working on this and we've been wanting to talk about it for so long and now it's out there and now we get to talk about it as much as we want and that's amazing. Yeah, it is. I'm that's, very that's excited. Oh, yes. <laughs> and also, look at that. We have, we have a live stream room-ish. Yeah, it's quite nice. Tempo it's temporary it's one, but it's... I like the cap and the stinger hive. It looks sick. It's a live stream, or a live stream room today, so... <laughs> today. <laughs> yeah. We've actually Delta, stolen imagine. the podcast uh, studio from Peter, so I hope he's not going to be too mad about that. But it's, uh, yeah. Some that's of you might recognize that table. Mm. Can we show the table? Can we show the table? <laughs> it, it feels real. I'm touching the bottom of the screen. OG now. table. That Touch table. it. Sorry. Ah, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Give it a kiss. Yes, I'm, I'm bringing the cringe already. The table. Hey, it's just, just looking screen. good. Stop trolling, bro. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm not Hamish. I do not have a beard, but you'll have to put with that, guys. <laughs> so. But yeah, maybe next time we'll have a beard. We'll see. Maybe for a Halloween. I don't know, special live stream. Or we're just going to dress no up. No bullying, this. chat. Hamish. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> <Really nice. laughs> gonna have to work on the accent. Okay. Yeah, going to be hard for me. Um, OK, so today uh, we're going to show you a lot of cool new stuff. And I know that a lot of you have been waiting for a lot of time. and what you can expect to see in the stream. I'm announcing it ahead, so if you guys think that you don't want to avoid spoilers, that's information for you. So we're going to talk about the PTS results, of course. Uh, we're going to talk about countdown new mod. We're going to talk about expertise system. Wow. Uh, we're going to probably touch on a little bit new season, Hidden Alliance, mm -hmm. uh, new targets, new history, um, continuation of the story. Uh, and a lot of other cool things. Yes, it's all season nine. It's all TU15. It's coming, and yeah, a lot of 
The things that are included in this update are out there already. We had the PTS, we will talk about that. So all this information is already is already public. Uh, but it's just good to talk about it again and like try to go into a bit more details on all of those uh, on all of those things. So yeah, but not everything. There are still some se secrets. Yeah, uh, of course. yeah, things that you're gonna see today for the first time. Merchandise. Yeah. But then again, we're not gonna show you everything. There is still gonna be something left as a special treat for no. later this no. week. So keep your eyes on our social <laughs> media. Uh, follow Tell us, us now. on Twitter. Facebook, Instagram, Reddit, Discord. Like so there's a surprise coming later this week, guys. That is we'll very see. important, especially for me. I'm your new calm deaf. So Not <laughs> too far away, I guess. All right. <laughs> Help Daya just uh, <laughs> show our boss that she's doing a good job. So follow everywhere. Please engage with all the uh, tweets and all the things out there. Yeah, it's that's very Daya. important for us. Special. Um, and yeah, it's very exciting for me because I'm the new addition to the team. And uh, it's been less than two months now. How has it been? Oh, it's been smooth, <laughs> smooth, <laughs> easy, long onboarding periods, taking yeah. it slow from the, the beginning. Longest, that was the longest onboarding ever, like one week, <laughs> honestly. Yeah. Uh, but then again, I'm very excited to be here. It does feel like one uh, lifetime opportunity. And it's, I would say, a dream coming true for me because uh, before, um, and that's not really a secret, and a lot of my former colleagues know about that, I had the division as an example of how you can engage with your community and get uh, people hyped up and heard and actually be as available part of the mm. team as well. And I think that, is, that has been very big for division and it feels surreal to actually now be sitting here, <laughs> you know. <laughs> oh, it's your responsibility. <laughs> yeah. So you mean when like engage with the community and do a good job of working with the community? You mean not the part where we were silent for a year and a half? Um, definitely not that part. You but then again, recommend that, huh? yeah, no, okay. I would not recommend no, just, that. Just I mean, it. now that I'm here and I know that the team uh, has been amazing. It has been doing everything in their power to get the content to you. As yeah, fast it's the as same possible, day, Kilby. But of course, there are some Should animations be. and we can just talk a little bit about that because mm -hmm. that's not really a secret and we want you guys to have that information. Yeah. No, I mean, we've been pretty uh, hopefully open, I'll try to be open on, you know, the situation with the game. And uh, a while ago, it feels like a, <laughs> a lifetime ago now, uh, we explained that after the release of uh, title update 12 and, uh, and season four, uh, this was actually supposed to be our last, uh, our last update. And this was supposed to be the, the end for the support of Division 2. But then thanks to uh, the good performance of the game, thanks to the, the support of the community, thanks to all of that, uh, it was decided that we should keep going. Uh, but uh, you know what that means, and I think uh, like some people in the community manage to understand that, but it's not always clear for everyone on what happens behind the scenes when we say that. Well, what happens is uh, we, we had to start from scratch um, because since we were supposed to uh, stop support for the game, that means we sent everyone away uh, because we want everybody to keep their job, so we send them to other projects. Uh, when we are told we need to keep going, uh, then it's not like, oh, wait, no, sorry, you're not on that going on that new project, you're coming back to the division. Like, we don't do that uh, unless people want to come back. But uh, uh, so that what that means is uh, at this point, it's like, it's cool, we get to keep supporting the game, but we need to find a team. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> basically we restarting the whole process, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, so it's finding a team, it's... Uh, relearning a lot of the processes, relearning how to uh, work on this game, uh, changing the way we work because scale-wise we're talking of course about a smaller team compared to what the, the team size we, we used to have. Uh, so it's not just about uh, working the hey, way Psycho, we used to and on, just fitting, the, uh, fitting the, the positions with new people. I, it's about changing the way we work because you don't work the same with uh, hundreds of people as you do with uh, dozens of people. It's a very different thing. Uh, so, so there was a lot of work, and of course, that uh, what that means is that the the, the actual work on the update dis did not start on you know the very first day. As soon as we announced that we were going to keep supporting the game, there was still a lot that was happening in behind the scenes on preparing all of that, and uh, and not just preparing for that one update, but preparing for 
long-term support with the game because as we've explained a few times already this is not just about TU15 this is not just about season 9 it's a return to uh, continuous support for yeah. the game with more seasons after that in an entire year of content already spoiling <laughs> everything <laughs> that's because I'm not reading my notes <laughs> but no that's don't spoil year for all <laughs> too late for oh. that <laughs> okay, I Hi. guess. Right. Yeah. But the good thing is that with the uh, ongoing work on rebuilding the mm. team and hiring new people, yeah. we're going to have even more content in the future. Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, yeah. it's secured now uh, that uh, we're already working on future updates and, uh, and we have you know, tons of ideas and ambitions on things we want to do. Uh, but also, the good thing is. Coming back now with uh, with content and with TU15 and having the PTS and having all of that, it allowed us to have a, a bit of a refresher, up-to-date uh, view from the community on what they would like uh, and what you guys want on the uh, on the game. So I think it's good to to have that conversation starting again uh, because last time we had those conversations was uh, you know a, a long time ago. So things may have changed and people may want different things compared to what we we knew back then. So I think it's great that this conversation has restarted, and now we get to uh, uh, we get to think a bit more long term with the game. Yeah, definitely. And with the you know uh, pandemic and real life events, that of course also has you know some limitations. Yeah, I mean it's uh, it wasn't easy <laughs> for <laughs> no, the team. <laughs> no, and even already on even already on year two, uh, when we did uh, season one through four, um, the pandemic had started already, and so. Some of it had an impact on uh, uh, on uh, on the year. Uh, one example that I uh, uh, that I like to use is uh, uh, in terms of recording. For example, recording voiceovers. Uh, that was one thing with uh, when the pandemic started and all the recording studios were shutting down because you know lockdowns. Uh, we were recording the voiceovers of seasons one, two, or one was done already, but two, three, and four, uh, and. Uh, so we had to record as fast as we could before the uh, before the um, uh, all the studios locked down, uh, and so you know it's all those kind of things that you don't don't really think of, but it's like okay, then we record everything, and then we have very you know fewer options for iteration compared to what we would usually do. Usually we would revisit a lot of that and re-record and, uh, and iterate uh, as many times as needed to reach the quality we want. But in this case, we had to be uh, uh, we had to compromise yeah. on all of that because you know the just not everything was available the way it used to. Yeah, of and course. of course also everybody working from home, which is great for some people, less great for others, because the access to the tools and uh, all of that is just, uh, is just not as easy. Yeah, when rising from the ashes is no longer a metaphor, but mm -hmm. <laughs> a description of our lives. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and yeah, uh, actually there is, um, I'm like not the only new hire, uh, probably the most recent one, but there is another a uh, great team of people that we wanted to introduce to you guys. Uh, it's the team from our Bucharest office yes. uh, in uh, Ubisoft, Romania. And we have a very nice message from them. Let's watch. Uh, Ubisoft Romania was founded in 1992 and uh, we're the first Ubisoft production studio to be founded outside France. Uh, there are currently over 1,800 employees on multiple departments, production, quality control, IT department. Today, I'm proud to say that Ubisoft Bucharest is the second largest Ubisoft studio worldwide and has a strong history of contributing to AAA franchises such as Assassin's Creed, Tom Clancy Ghost Recon, Watch Dogs, Just Dance, and now Division. The work on Division 2 started on April 1st, 2021 with a team of just 15 people. We quickly grow to a peak of 35 for delivering gear 4 on all job families. Artists, designers, programmer, QA. The team was very happy to work on Division 2, working on a live game where everything happens fast. We receive live feedback from a big, great community and you need to quickly act on it. Working on this title represented a great opportunity and challenge. We had the chance to work with the Snowdrop engine, which was the first time for Ubisoft Romania on a new pipeline and a well-established IP. We knew we had to get familiar with existing content and gameplay systems fast to reach the high standards set by the main game and its previous updates. One of the biggest challenges was to adapt to the workflow of a live game. 
not only continue working on the new updates, but also understanding the needs of the Division 2 community. Year 4 started from the idea of new content for Division 2 and its community, uh, new content and new features. Together with the team at Massive, we put together several ideas for the content and features that we wanted to put in. There were several pitches related to the countdown mode and what type of mode it was going to be, how many players, complexity and so on. Uh, as for the map, the entire team contributed with ideas related to the environment and what would fit best. In the end, we decided to go with a co-op mode with 8 players and matchmaking because it would be the most versatile option. The map environment had to be something that makes sense with the countdown mode and that sets a fast pace straight away but there are also size and tech constraints connected to this. What we knew for sure is that we wanted to offer the players the fantasy of exploring a surprising, inaccessible location, which is something Division excels at. So we had big shoes to fill. We investigated multiple themes and narrowed it down to three different briefs, out of which the power plant was a winner. Next, we did detailed research on these types of facilities and started to flesh out the different spaces, considering their identity, visuals and moods. Countdown had to be compelling, so we constantly kept looking for ways to convey the tense atmosphere. We initially had daytime on the exterior of the map, but we felt we had to push things a bit more, so we changed it closer to nighttime. We had a lot of fun working on the map, and we are excited to be able to finally share it with the community. What a nice video. Oh. All those beautiful faces. Yeah. <laughs> and um, as, as Tim mentioned in the video, uh, they played a crucial role in mm -hmm. delivering the countdown. Yeah. And yeah, maybe we can talk a little yeah. more I about it. I mean, that. countdown and, uh, and a bunch of things in, the, in this update. But yes, I mean, uh, Bucharest has been our main partner uh, since we've started working on this update and on you know, producing new content uh, for the division. Uh, and, uh, and they've been a great partner. You know, it's, it's really not easy to jump into a project, uh, take over the bulk of it, um, and, uh, uh, and basically take over the work of someone else. I think if you would start from a game that hasn't been shipped yet, that would probably be very different. But here, taking a game that already has two years, uh, that has been made by someone else, like a, I don't code myself, but I always hear from coders, you know, I'm sure some people in the chat are actually coders in video games or other uh, uh, disciplines. You don't like to go and work on somebody else's code because everybody has a different way of doing it. So, uh, so you can imagine that for, for them to jump into that, learning the game, learning how the game works, learning how the game was made, learning the new engine, learning all of that learning to work with us, uh, and all of us setting up those processes of how do we collaborate together, that was a, that was a huge endeavor. And the team really uh, took it beautifully and did it, uh, did it really great, and I hope they're watching, and good job, everyone, yeah. because uh, we're super proud of what was achieved uh, together with the team. Uh, and yes, Countdown is one, uh, one manifestation of that. It's mostly uh, the work of the Bucharest team. Uh, we, we worked on you know, the ideas together, but then actually bringing it to life was, was all, uh, all from them. Uh, and, uh, and I think they did a really good job at bringing something that, that matches the vision we had uh, agreed on, and also still uh, you know, follows the legacy of the Division, Division 2, and what, uh, you know, what, what the game is known for. I mean, that space is beautiful. Uh, you want to explore it, you want to, uh, you want to stay there, you want to see all the details. Uh, the gameplay is, uh, is fun, it's, you know, good PvP as we, we like to do it, so, or PvE, sorry, I said PvP, not PvE, uh, as we like to do it. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, so yeah, it's, uh, it's, been, it's really been a pleasure and it's just the beginning because we're going to keep collaborating together for the uh, future updates. So, yeah. uh, and it actually, it, uh, it's very nice and inspiring, especially for me as a new person, to see how every single person working on the game, no matter the discipline, super passionate mm. about everything and wants only the best. Yeah. So, um, I mean, at least that's my um, uh, kind of impression mm. of our play sessions that we usually have with Bucharest team. Mm. Uh, which were very helpful, especially during the PTS, because yeah. it allows us to witness all the uh, issues and bugs reported by the community and kind of get together and discuss uh, mm. everything and actually find the solutions. So, 
it's, it was nice. Yeah, I think it's a, uh, you know, it's a, uh, it's a pleasure to, to come to work every day because it's, uh, you know, the team we have today with Bucharest and the team at Massive and all of that, it's, everybody is just super passionate. And I know that, you know, you say that all the time with, uh, with teams working on video games, but, uh, uh, you know, for most of, uh, most of the people, it's people who chose to be on Division 2. People that had choices, uh, even us at Massive, you know, like we could be working on Star Wars, we could be working on something else, and instead we decided to stay on Division because that's the project we're passionate about. So, uh, and that's that's a vibe you get from a lot of people in that team. So, uh, it might be a smaller team, but it's a team that is just really loving the game and want to make it as good as we can. Yeah, I mean, it's actually the silver lining that can be found almost in everything that this team mm -hmm. does. And I'm saying that as a person who just joined, <laughs> so it's super obvious uh, for me. And yeah, it's it's a lot of inspiration, a lot of passion shared around the office, mm -hmm. a lot of. Uh, very interesting discussions, but we're not going to spoil it to you. <laughs> not now. And actually, I mentioned the PDS, and I must say that uh, maybe because uh, I'm a newcomer dev and I was kind of helping with that one, but maybe because the content was so good, it's the most successful PDS that we had so far. And we had 19k players, even yeah. a little bit more than that. Yeah. Uh, so it was very exciting and yeah. actually super productive and allowed us to uncover a lot of uh, quite nasty bugs and issues, but that is what PTS is for, so totally fine. It's better to have them on the PTS than having them on the game when we uh, launched the update. Definitely, definitely. Mm -hmm. And of course, we also received a tons of valuable feedback yeah. and suggestions from the community and we were even able to act on a lot of those suggestions, mm -hmm. for example, uh, calm down difficulty, yes. right? Expertise, mm -hmm. uh, cost, and you know, and gear as and well, gear, and gear yeah, balancing, and fixing some of the bugs, and of course the delta issues that uh, uh, that we heard about, and uh, and all of that. So yeah, that's it was it was great on one hand to just just see the enthusiasm from uh, from everyone uh, to actually come back and test it and, and just try to see what this update is about. Uh, uh, and have all those conversations and engaging with everyone, but it was also extremely valuable in terms of you know the the sheer outcome we get out of this PTS in uh, in terms of learnings, in terms of uh, bugs that are found and uh, and balancing changes. Yeah, yeah. So we sincerely thank every single person who took part in testing and helped us make the game better. It won't be possible without you. So thank you so much. <laughs> and yeah, I think since we kind of teased quite a lot of uh, things about new season. It's actually about time to dive straight into that yes. and uh, tell you everything about new season. This is Captain Lewis of the True Sons. My advanced team is already in DC. You still have no idea what you're up against. Oh hell, that, that skin was sick. Cool you that, see that? Right? That's super That cool. was sick, man. I mean, Dang. I'm excited. So, uh, let's just go through everything that we saw right now. Uh, so, in Season 9, uh, which is a part of uh, TU15 update, uh, of course, you're going to get everything that was available on the PDS. Calm mm -hmm. down, expertise. Uh, of course, you have seen the new Manhunt calendar and the Season Pass. So. Absolutely, totally, that's gonna be <laughs> in there. And for the season pass, we're gonna get a new reward track uh, with a lot of cool items available in there, including exotics, including Heartbreaker new gear set, yes. and a lot of new cool minty gear dies. 
uh, that I don't want to spoil to you right now, <laughs> but you're gonna see that one in the Yay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> actually, yeah. just uh, state of the art. Some new gear <laughs> dies. <laughs> we've got every it, color, it don't we? Uh, because I know that some people were not sure about that, but it is a full-fledged new season. Uh, so it's not, you know, we've been rerunning seasons uh, for the past year, and we went through one, two, three, four, uh, or one, three, four, two, because why not? Uh, but it's, um, it is, uh, this one is a completely new one, so it comes with all the novelty that you can expect from a new season, yeah, new gear, new rewards, new manhunts, new story, uh, and all of that, and even a few extras. Yeah. And, um, Oh, yeah, the April event. Honestly, uh, I was thinking <laughs> there's yeah, something there's I two. forgot to mention. Yeah, some people yeah. were asking yeah, if there yeah. would be new April Lots of two grinding. Of them, two of them. At two April events. Yeah, and they're really amazing. The, the design suggests out of your mind. So. Yeah. <laughs> but and that's also part of the, actually, uh, you know, to go back on your team and all of that, that's also a pipeline that we have to completely uh, restart. So, uh, so I know we had said back then when we said we would... Uh, need time to bring back uh, content, we said we would still be making new apart events. But, uh, you know, it turns out that actually rebuilding that pipeline to be able to make them uh, was also a lot of work. And that's something that, uh, uh, that uh, our producer, Pali, uh, put a lot of work into. Some uh, of them are really nice. Of sweat yeah. and tears, I don't know. But uh, <laughs> it's, been a, uh, it's, been a, it's been a whole process. Uh, but now I think we've landed in a really good place where uh, we're able to produce up and, uh, and I think people will notice uh, the quality is, uh, uh, it's going to be pretty good. Yeah, I agree with you. And also new season means the continuation of the story. Yes. And trigger warning, character death. <sighs> <laughs> Sorry, I needed to get it out there. Uh, so, before we continue discussing uh, countdown and expertise, I want us Who to. Who does she mean? <laughs> I don't know. Who's watches. Dead? <laughs> I don't have watches on me. Weird, but. <laughs> so, before we start discussing, yes. do you ban hunt new targets? Yeah. Is there anything you want to. Come clean about. We know already, <laughs> man. We know about this. No, so <laughs> now it's uh, there's been a lot of conversation uh, from season four all the way to now uh, about uh, where season four ended, uh, it's and, fake. Uh, and yeah. season nine is it is a direct, you know, it's the direct. Uh, consequences of season four. It comes immediately after in our timeline. So that whole year uh, that we waited between season four and now didn't happen in, a, in our story. Uh, in our story, you start season nine immediately after uh, the events yeah. of Camp White Talk, uh, where you went after <laughs> Fadeout. Um, <laughs> Zero. And yes, Fadeout is dead. She is dead. She's not coming back. <coughs> you took her down, uh, even though Isaac didn't say it. You know, Isaac is a computer, sometimes computers bug. I don't know. I'm sure we'll retcon a reason why Isaac didn't say anything, but uh, no, uh, Fela is dead. She was always meant to be dead. And that was the reason why I'm saying that it's not as a spoiler to season nine. It is something that we had intended to be clear at the end of the uh, season. Thousands four. of text it wasn't probably clear, not. It was bro. not unclear because we intended it that way. It's just the execution made it unclear. Uh, so that's why I want to confirm that when you go into season nine, it's not a surprise. Fedor is dead. Uh, but, but what happened there? Like, why? Why did she do all of that? Why did she go rogue? Why did she kill, uh, uh, assassinate the president? Why did she blame it on the division? Like all of that. This is all the questions that we're building on for season nine. Uh, mm -hmm. So season nine, as I said, takes place immediately after starting directly from Camp, Camp White Oak, uh, with you know. The dead body of Fade Out, uh, and uh, and and allowing us to start, you know, answering some of those questions uh, as you go through the season. So it's really about it's really about what happened there, but also everything that is happening in the city. There are still threats everywhere, and you saw in that trailer uh, a new uh, a new enemy that is uh, arising with Captain Lewis, who is one of the new uh, one of the new leaders. It looks uh, nice. Of the true signs looks nice. Coming for no, Faye's dead. Faye's um, dead. And all of that, of course, uh, will connect. And uh, so it's a, it's a, it's a lot of story. It's going to uh, hopefully provide some answers uh, to uh, to the questions that uh, that showed up after season four. Uh, bring new questions as well, uh, because why not? 
and um, and yeah, it is it is overall an ambition for the entire year to just lean a bit more heavily into story and do a bit of a better job at delivering story and creating compelling story that people will want to come from season to season to you know unfold more of it. Yeah, our narrative director is actually creating a lot of new surprises for us. Hello, Warren. <laughs> 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 Thank you so much for that. Not, n I don't know, I, I can't really be so happy about Feylau's death, but yeah, now that uh, Kat is out of the bag, uh, we can actually And now it's show clear, so now you can make yeah. your piece with yeah. it. And All of you. Yeah. She's dead. Yeah. <laughs> Not coming back. On floor. But now we can move on to Manhunt targets, uh, including Captain Lewis, the prime target mm -hmm. uh, we're going to have in season nine. And we have a trailer. Uh, How much is it? I think it's free, targets. isn't it? Let's I don't know. I think it's free. Well, it looks like the True Sons are getting bolder under their new leader, General Anderson. He used to be a strategist for Ridgeway, and it looks like his ambition has reached new heights. He's smart. They're keeping him at a secure location. We're getting reports of five of his true sons moving on DC. Major Castillo, a civilian turned true son. Castillo's background is in engineering. He's been taking over radio frequencies and broadcasting these rants that, frankly, if you didn't know better, could be quite the recruiting tool. Sergeant Daniels, this woman is a piece of work. We're getting reports of her indiscriminately assassinating civilians in the street. She's on a rampage. We've also got a logistical nightmare on our hands with Lieutenant Chang. His background and experience has shored up the True Sun supply lines and weapons. We can't afford to let him build their stockpiles. Then there's Major Xander. She has some anger management issues. Xander's been torturing and interrogating civilians. I don't know what she's hoping to learn from them, but we can't allow her to carry out this inquisition. And last but not least is Captain Lewis. We haven't actually seen him in DC yet, but we've intercepted comms that imply he and General Anderson are planning something big. Agent, you know what to do. Kill all of them. So yeah, those are the new targets. And actually the first one, the alpha target, uh, Castillo, is yeah, it's like going goldish. to be available right <coughs> on mm -hmm. the day of the release so yes. may may 12th mm -hmm. and you can start hunting for castillo right away yes and then the other ones and uh, yeah all the way to captain lewis who's a yeah pretty good character <laughs> there any, okay yeah no spoilers <laughs> because because we were explicitly asked uh by a lot of players that they ah, d yeah. want this stream to be spoiler free so we're not gonna provide a lot of we're details <laughs> we're asking people to be respectful of spoilers so we should uh, we should discipline ourselves to do the same uh, this is just so much good things to talk about yeah but um, actually while we still have that on replay we can uh, start discussing countdown mm -hmm. bit by bit because there is there is quite a lot to cover and as you guys know, especially those who were <laughs> able to take part in the uh, testing, that the countdown, the new PvE mod, is meant for eight players, yep. match made players. So it's possible to uh, find, you know, randos to play with. I know that some of you just don't like to do that, but let's agree it's much better than just randos. <laughs> search for people. <laughs> <coughs> out there on social, so it would be possible for you to uh, match made uh, with other players and try and beat it. But of course, answering the questions that I can envision, like I don't have the chat here, but I'm sure that there are questions uh, being asked there. Hey, Dennis. It still will be possible for you to try and beat down uh, the mode with less than eight players. So if you have a group of friends, with the quite decent builds and good coordination, it should be possible for you to try. And good. yeah, we've seen that during PDS. Actually. Yeah, some people completed it with uh, during PTS with uh, with much smaller groups, and uh, and you know difficulty was a big conversation during PTS on uh, on countdown on. Uh, uh, 
how hard do we want it to be, how hard is it perceived to be, uh, and um, you know, we, uh, the way we envisioned it was always um, if you are, you know, there's matchmaking. We don't know yet, bro. It's like if you, I'll say that, I, if, you, if you are a, a player that either doesn't have a pre-made group uh, of eight, uh, or uh, do not have you know the the best gear in the world. You can use matchmaking, and if you find seven other players that are in the same situation as you, just the sheer number of eight players should allow you to get through at least reach the point where you're completing the main objective. Extracting might be a bit more of a challenge, but you will get the rewards for having successfully uh, stopped uh, the events at the uh, at the uh, at the power plant. So the extraction is just bonus, um, but but you should be able to get through. Uh, and of course, for players that are more advanced, that have teams that are really made, that are you know really good at strategizing, I wish, where, that have Don't the, think they the will best though. teams in the world, uh, then the challenge comes into completing it with uh, with less than eight. So so that's the way we uh, we try to balance it, which is making it uh, achievable by eight players that are not uh, not uh, the most uh, optimized players, and therefore the optimized players will look at uh, completing it with less. Yeah, we might unintentionally set people on chasing uh, <laughs> the possibility of beating it solo <laughs> or with less uh, than eight. <laughs> I, I have no doubt that it would be possible, and so it's the it's always the same. But you know, it's even on PTS, people had a few days of testing, uh, and you know, the, the balancing changed quite quite drastically, from, especially from PTS yeah. one to PTS two. Uh, so, uh, so it will take some time, but uh, you know, when you look at other content uh, in the game, uh, you know, at first it took a long, a lot of time for people to complete it, and now they've learned how to master it. Uh, so I have no doubt that it's going to be the same. No countdown. People countdown is kind of like a new to, thing uh, uh, to beat it, and therefore it's going to uh, become easier for uh, for everyone to approach it because people will become more and more knowledgeable about it and how it works. Yeah, definitely. And the competition is on, so tweet at us once you're able to beat it solo or with I've, two. I've beaten it solo. I posted a That's video about it. for sure. But it was yeah, easy. I mean, personally, <laughs> like on the third try. Um, I, I, tried I just it ran test. towards the end yes, and course, extracted. Uh, before the, and on PDS as well. And the change in the difficulty was obvious. Nothing mm -hmm. yet. And I'm kind of yeah. happy with what we achieved with uh, phase two. Yep. Phase three yeah, I mean was phase terrible. Two was, you know, much more where we wanted it to be. Phase one, it's it felt off from the moment the PTS went live and people started playing it, and we watched you know the streams and uh, and we went into the game ourselves and we played it, and we we're, were all just realizing, okay, this is this is not where we want it to be, and yeah. this wasn't what we had on our test uh, yeah, yeah, built yeah. internally. Uh, so uh, so yeah, that was again. Super useful for the PTS to get uh, to get that, so we had the chance to uh, to revisit that and, uh, and make it a bit uh, closer to our vision uh, for PTS two. And it looks like we landed in a good spot. Of course, there's conversation about difficulty in general, and that's something we will uh, we will tackle. But uh, but it is at least that difficulty, the one we had intended initially. I think we've landed pretty uh, pretty close to uh, yeah, where we envisioned it initially. Yeah, and talking about difficulty settings, we've seen a lot of feedback uh, during all the uh, PTS phases and a yeah, lot of bye you guys bye. asking whether or not it would be possible to introduce other difficulty options. I mean, we can't really promise anything right now, but we're looking into that. So at least we can say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, we, we're hearing the feedback and uh, you know, we, we, we don't want to take the choice away from, uh, from everyone. So if... Uh, uh, it's clear that everybody wants to have a chance to play it, uh, and uh, and just you know uh, just having the group size as the only uh, the only factor here is not enough uh, in terms of giving more granular options for for everyone. Uh, so we're looking into that. Uh, it's a bit of a tricky uh, thing because it's not just as in oh well just turn on the challenging and hard and normal difficulty and whatever. That's not how it works, of course. Uh, nothing is easy like that in video games. Uh, it's all uh, it's all quite more complex, but we're yeah, we're looking at how we could try to give a bit more control uh, to uh, to everyone to you know uh, cater the difficulty to uh, to their builds. So to summarize everything, uh, would be, be would it be um, fine to say that the possibility of adding new difficulty options is under the investigation, and we're gonna collect more feedback 
after maybe the legendary release and Possible. what you guys think about the mod <coughs> and uh, what other suggestions uh, you would have after having your hands on it. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I mean, that's something we'll, uh, we are investigating already. And uh, but we also want, yes, we want more feedback. We want to hear from more, uh, more people because we also know that usually the population of the PTS is also a population that is, uh, that is more advanced, more experienced with the game uh, compared to the population we have on the main game. So we want Lexington. to have that part of the feedback yeah. as well. Once, I remember uh, that. Once the mod is available to everyone and of course also console players that didn't have a chance to be on PTS. Uh, we want to hear everyone in terms of uh, you know, looking at where did we land with difficulty in the end, uh, and then do we need to tune that difficulty, and uh, do we need to add more uh, more options, and then can we do it? Uh, these yeah. are all the things we're going to be, uh, uh, you know, looking at moving forward. Yeah, you heard the man. Keep the feedback coming. <laughs> and um, I think that we pretty much covered the countdown. So uh, let's just move to expertise feature. Mm -hmm. uh, that was also a big part of the PTS. And we also collected tons of valuable feedback. Yes. And yeah, so here is the feature. I hope you can see uh, the screenshot. Uh, it probably would be valuable for those who were not able to test it on the PTS. And here we have the uh, expertise uh, menu. So as you can see, super straightforward, very smooth, easy to understand. Uh, <laughs> no, I mean expertise is a it's a complex feature, and uh, and we always struggle to even sum it up in a few uh, in a few words because it is it is advanced and it is for advanced gameplay. Uh, but the idea with expertise is really to um, add a new way for players to gain power uh, <coughs> and uh, and uh, and also making that a kind of a future-proof solution uh, because since expertise uh, is completely dependent on how many items exist in a game, as soon as we add new items, that means expertise can go up again and that means players can become more powerful. Uh, so that was uh, what we, we lacked about this, uh, about this feature, is really the idea that well, with every new season, every time we add new items, then we're also by default increasing uh, the, expertise, the maximum uh, expertise cap. Uh, and therefore allowing players to gain even more power. Uh, and uh, yeah, PTS was again super useful on that one. And yes, we had a lot of feedback on the on the progression base, on the the cost of all the upgrades, uh, on the UI as well, on the screen. Uh, we made some changes to uh, try to uh, make things a bit more understandable, uh, a bit clearer. So uh, yeah, so thanks everyone for all that feedback. Uh, as usual, you know, uh, these are things we're going to keep uh, keep looking at, uh, looking for feedback uh, moving forward uh, once Tier 15 comes out, and, uh, and yeah, things may still evolve uh, after that, depending on where where all of you want us to bring it. And I would also say that uh, I mean, of course, it's quite hard to describe this feature in few words, but uh, a good thing about expertise is that it allows you to try all new gear and weapons that you weren't able or didn't want to try for different reasons. Mm. And that's an interesting way to enhance your play style. Yeah. I mean, of course, it comes with a cost. And the cost can be very high sometimes uh, to, to become proficient in mm. all the uh, possible. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So, but, but then again, that was one of the biggest yeah. learnings we took from PDS. The yeah. end of cost reduction for expertise, uh, what you're gonna see uh, in the game uh, in several days, mm -hmm. it's uh, an upgraded version of expertise. Yeah. Yes, it's, uh, we've changed some of the cost. Uh, we, we talked about that. We, uh, uh, we halved uh, the cost for the upgrades from what's it, rank 11 to rank 20. Um, yeah, absolutely. And, uh, and on top of that, for gear pieces, so like uh, chess pieces and knee pads and all of that, we've had that even more uh, because it takes six pieces to actually upgrade your entire gear. Uh, so, uh, uh, so yeah, but I, I know that you know, there were conversations uh, from the PTS and from the moment we revealed the, the feature on like how grandy it is. Um, but you know, the, way, the way we look at it, it's more, it's a passive thing that is going up as you play the game. So of course you can approach it as, okay, I want to max it out immediately. So I'm going to 
grind the hell out of it to max out uh, everything and be you know amongst the first to uh, to reach the maximum power. Uh, and that's cool, you can play it that way, but it's also the good thing with expertise is just you don't even have to be aware of it uh, and you're still going to be increasing your proficiency uh, because as long as you're using items, uh, you're gaining experience until they become proficient and then you need to use new items or you need to donate to, uh, to gain more proficiency. But, uh, but overall, it's just equip the items, forget about it, play the game, play whatever you want, uh, and, uh, and you will be increasing your expertise. So it's not asking you to play specific activities to do specific things, it's just play the game your way, the way you want. And on top of the usual rewards you get out of it, you're also going to increasing, be increasing your expertise and therefore opening door for uh, more power. Yeah, absolutely, and I think that was actually a very uh, right des right decision for 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 the team. And thanks for all the feedback uh, because otherwise we weren't able to make that one to lower the costs, hmm? right? Because now it's not only that m basically feature available to super hardcore players, but almost to l like I, I would say that it's gonna suit almost all uh, every every possible play style. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's um, of course it's it is it is uh, an endeavor to max out uh, even one build uh, in expertise. It's going to be a, it's going to be quite some uh, quite some time investment. Uh, but with the cost being lower now, we hope that we land it in a place where it becomes more accessible for everyone. And then there's another another part of the discussion, which is you know uh, thinking forward uh, about future updates. But it's. Uh, the other part of the problem is not necessarily just the cost of the expertise upgrades, it's just the accessibility of the resources. Uh, and maybe that's also something we need to look at, uh, especially exotic materials, which is uh, you know extremely rare in the game at the moment. Yeah, definitely. And since those who would only be reduced and cut in half from level 11 to 20, mm -hmm. and other levels would still need the exact same amount. Mm -hmm. After so that, yeah. yeah. It, yeah, could, yeah be, it could be quite challenging. Mm -hmm. But then again, it's also a good opportunity for you to invest more time in the game, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, but it's always, you know, uh, once again, it's uh, nothing is ever set in stone on a game like The Division. Uh, we can always change it moving forward. Uh, and so we'll see, we'll see the feedback we get from the entire player base once it's yeah. out there. Uh, now we've reacted to the feedback we got from the PTS. Uh, and uh, if, if the feedback and the data we get from the game, because we always also look at data, if those two tell us a similar story of it's too slow, it's too grindy, then of course we will act. Uh, but it's, uh, let's start with what we have now and uh, we, will see, uh, we will see how that goes. Yeah, I'm just trying here to advertise the hell out of this feature. <laughs> but, but yeah, what he said, so. <laughs> Daya just wants you to play the game. Well, as long as you can. <laughs> I mean. Uh, maybe maybe because I would need some help with expertise myself, so... <laughs> Which is, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's right over to us for that, because that's the reason why we're here talking about more content. It's because people actually still play the game, people love the game, people spend time uh, into it and uh, spend some money as well. So, yes, the more you play, uh, the better it is for us and the more it guarantees that we keep uh, supporting the game. But you do you, play the game at your own rhythm, it's fine. Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, since I'm the, uh, I'm not a hardcore player, I'm just a regular person who enjoys the game, enjoys the setting, the music, uh, having a chat with my teammates. So I can definitely understand the more casual approach <laughs> to the game. And I would even say be an advocate <laughs> of this this part of uh, fan base. So yeah, because we, have pretty much everyone on the hardcore side in the team uh, anyway. <laughs> you ask, you ask, I mean, that depends who you ask, right? Everybody has a very different definition. I'm like shade level 300, and I'm sure a lot of people would call me a casual uh, because I just put like 400 hours into the game. So, casual. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, mine is even less, but I want a name. So, <laughs> to be fair, there's a lot of hours that also go into the test builds and the development builds. Uh, yeah, yeah, and, and that doesn't get counted. Somehow. Yeah, yeah, it you never count. gets counted. So. Uh, but yeah, I think enough with the uh, complicated discussions. Uh, <laughs> there, <laughs> uh, we still have some other uh, nice things that we wanted to share with you. Uh, so, for example, uh, April event. Mm -hmm. uh, I know that it's probably uh, a big 
uh, you know, leap from <laughs> discussing expertise. <laughs> Not everybody's favorite topic, but yeah. uh, come on, new, new outfits, new ways to uh, customize your look. Uh, that's always fun. And yeah, as we said, we will have two of them in this season. Them, uh, yeah. That's something we did with season four. Uh, and, uh, and yeah, people seem to be happy about it. And we were happy about uh, the performance of those. So that's something we want to do a bit more. Uh, and we have, as I said, set up the pipeline to try to be able to keep uh, that rhythm. So two of them in season nine. Uh, Fairview crew being the first one. Yeah, and uh, our team uh, is very uh, passionate about creating new outfits mm -hmm. and uh, especially with uh, Pali, uh, mm -hmm. who is uh, our art team lead. And it's hard to imagine anyone more invested <laughs> in the game on the art side. Mm -hmm. So uh, that, that only means that in the future, we're going to have even more uh, cool outfits. And actually, this, 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 uh, um, why the, these two April events are special is because we're going to get the backpacks vanity for the first time ever. Yes, that's true. That's something that we've uh, wanted to do for a very long time, and uh, and uh, yeah, probably finally made it happen. But it's uh, yes, we are going to start introducing the concept of skins for gear. Uh, so as part of those outfits uh, in this apparel event, you will also have, for example, for some of them, yeah, the backpack that will be part of it. And so that's basically a transmog, the same way that the uh, current transmog exists, except that they are unique and they are not linked to a specific item. Uh, you unlock it through the apparel event and then it's a new skin you can apply to your gear. Yeah, and did we mention that going forward, uh, every season going to have two apparel events? Well, you did now. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> I mean, that's but exciting. Yeah, I mean, we, we said that's our ambition, to try to keep it that way. And yes, it's uh, uh, that's something we want to keep going. Um, because uh, April events per season. Because again, it's, uh, people like new things and like new looks. I think my favorite April event um, was the one, the heat wave. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, you didn't. <laughs> Why? <laughs> but it was so nice. <laughs> <laughs> Probably the most hated about the event. In, you know, right? So it's my favorite. I don't know where you're <laughs> I get so PTSD salty, guys. From it, but, uh, <laughs> um, no, I think. I don't know. What's, uh, I think the. Um, Silent Night. Silent Night, yeah. I think, was, uh, yeah. was my favorite because just there were so many good outfits in this one. But yeah, Hidden Wave is so nice. I mean. I mean, some people liked it, which is cool. Uh, I mean, recently someone asked Mortem on Twitter about the, um, you know, merchandise and all the swag. Mm. And I went looking for uh, possibilities, you know, for, for those merchandise to be mm -hmm. purchased somehow by players and whatnot. And I found out that we actually have the Division 2 flip-flops and like beach towels available <laughs> on one of the Ubisoft websites. So <laughs> it's real life heat wave. <laughs> yeah, I'm just I'm just dropping this mm. information here in case you guys are looking for a new beach towel or yeah. flip flops before you start on vacation. <laughs> so <laughs> it's actually yeah, it's the weirdest uh, merchandise a game can have. Yeah. I'm gonna watch. Okay. No, I, I take note <laughs> and I hope uh, I hope Bali is watching. So Daya is asking for more summer vacation themed apartments. Those were funny, man. Uh, I like those ones. Those I'm were sure funny ones. Be very popular, so let's yeah. do it. They've been showcasing. <laughs> I that mean, part. blame me. <laughs> I'll make a video for it to <laughs> recap everything if you want. want. But well, yeah, well. I mean, uh, since we already kind of dropped several hints on uh, year four and what's gonna happen with the game going forward. I uh, think it's time to address the elephant in the room, spec revamp. Ah, <laughs> like which elephant? There's a okay. few of them. Uh, yes, yeah, spec revamp. I mean, uh, spec revamp, as you know, was initially planned for TU15. Uh, so we've, uh, uh, we've put a lot of work into, into this. And the idea with spec revamp is to, well, to really change the way we approach specializations. Right now, for a lot of people, specialization is a choice you make, mostly for the passive buffs you're going to get out of it, and then you forget about it. And the use of the signature weapon is even more something you know, anecdotal that uh, you may remember or you may not. Again, some people might use it more than others, but the game doesn't really answer well to you using your signature weapon because we never really found the right spot between should it be powerful so it actually makes a difference uh, but then 
it kind of negates a lot of the boss mechanics we have in the game. Uh, should we not be too powerful, but then people don't use it. Uh, so, so the revamp, the idea of the spec revamp is to change that and make your specialization choice like a really crucial choice in terms of playstyle and the build you're going to uh, you're going to uh, to go for. So, um, so that's why we are we've changed the way the the specialization tree looks, uh, and we've changed all the bonuses you get there. Uh, we've changed the way we're giving you those bonuses. Some of them will be directly under the linear progression as you rank up your specialization. Some others are going to be choices that you get from that tree. But uh, one thing we wanted was to make those choices meaningful. So they are powerful choices. They are kind of build playstyle defining choices. And you will have to make difficult choices because you will not be able to specialize in everything. Uh, some uh, decisions will be mutually exclusive. So if you decide to go left, the right branch gets locked. Uh, or, uh, or in any way, you will not, not have enough points to max out everything. Um, because that's, that's where people you know, then forget and stop caring. Because if I maxed out everything, I just played the game and I don't uh, need to think of how the mechanics work. Um, so, uh, so anyway, this is uh, it's a big thing. Uh, it's, uh, it's a big endeavor. Uh, we really wanted to have it ready for TU15, but unfortunately it's not ready. Um, and we don't want to rush it. We, we want to do it proper because it's, uh, it's important. Uh, and, uh, and we really want that to be as game-changing as possible. Uh, so we don't really want to compromise on the quality and, and rush releasing it because we said it would be TU15. As we've said, we have a, we have a year of content. Uh, so if it's not ready for TU15, then uh, Hopefully, it will be ready for the TU after that. Um, but it is, uh, it is, it is almost there, but it's not entirely there. So we want to take the time to make it as good as we can. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we can wait. <laughs> <laughs> sure, everybody's patient. Uh, yeah. No, but it's uh, you know, like we again, we know we're here for uh, for uh, for the year. So um, so it's. It's something that needs to be okay, but if, uh, if a feature is not ready, it moves, uh, it moves to the next one. And, uh, and again, we will uh, hopefully talk more about it. There will be you know, PTSs in the future and all of that, so we will have uh, plenty of chances to show more, uh, to talk more about, uh, about that change and other things coming in the year, uh, and, uh, and try to see to make sure it lands where we want it to be. Um, it would have been great to have it in TU15, but it was part of the package initially. Uh, but it's. Uh, I wish we get it in TU15, man. To, uh, that to sucks. Sure we do it right. Yeah, just yeah, another year. And then we have uh, a wide array of really nice um, other things to play with. So mm -hmm. should be fine. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I more. agree, James. More to uh, year four, but uh, this is not the topic of this. Yeah, time. yeah, yeah, yeah. We us, will man. probably mention it uh, somewhere. But it is. At the time. Yeah. It is something we've said, and I think we need to, you know, to say with every occasion. It is, it is not just U15. Uh, it is year four. Uh, U15 is the first drop, uh, and there will be more drops, and each drop will come with new things, new seasons, and new content. Uh, and uh, uh, and we have some plans. There's a bunch of things we want to we want to do, as I mentioned. But we also want to hear a bit from the community uh, what you want, uh, and what are the things that. Uh, uh, that need where we should invest time and resources into. Uh, we've mentioned that you know we're operating with a smaller team, so we need to be smart with the decisions we are making, where we want to invest our time and resources, because we don't have the luxury of throwing a million people at problems. Uh, so we need to make the right decisions and uh, uh, and look for the uh, the things that are going to be impactful. Um, but. Uh, this is not a decision we only want to do ourselves. Uh, we need to also hear from everyone uh, what are the things that are meaningful and impactful to them. Uh, so we can maybe change some of the ideas we have or decide, okay, maybe we wanted to do that, but it turns out that this is more pressing for the, for the player base. So this is where we should go. Yeah, and right. that's okay. uh, a enough. hint that one I should be doing <laughs> by delivering the... <laughs> I'll do that, no worries. That's fine. <laughs> Good thing we have a new comdev that's going to yeah, help if us. The uh, <laughs> if the issue is going to be really pressing, like I'm here, so just hit me up. <laughs> but talking about That'd the be nice. yeah, that's very important. I'm not answering the comments or the questions that are not addressed nicely. So yeah, yeah that's the thing. As usual, negativity <laughs> is fine, but it needs to be constructive. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. 
And actually, <laughs> talking about community, uh, since we pretty much covered almost everything that we wanted, right? We talked about countdown, we talked about expertise, new manhunt, the continuation of the story, uh, Fei Lao, but scratch that. <laughs> um, upper elements, um, PDS, uh, new yeah. team, Bucharest uh, team, and yeah, I think we covered pretty much everything. And I'm thinking that the remaining time we're going to spend answering your questions, questions from mm -hmm. the chat. Sure. And community managers uh, were helping us Go with spam, collecting guys. the questions from the chat. So we have like a list of yeah. the questions we, we can try answering. And um, the first question is about when we will have crossplay. Uh, yeah, that's. Uh, do you want to take that one? <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I think I've been pretty open about it, but it's uh, it's not something we're looking at uh, at the moment. Uh, as I uh, explained right. in, a, in a Twitter thread a long time ago, and I <laughs> usually uh, uh, link that to that one when people ask me the question on Twitter, but it's. Uh, that's not the way our saves work uh, in the game. Uh, you know, the, the online infrastructure, and that's coming from someone that is not online savvy, so I apologize if some of our online people are watching no. and I'm butchering it. But my understanding of it is that we have separate databases for each platform. So Xbox, PlayStation, PC, they all have uh, separate databases. They don't communicate with each other. They don't know. Stop uh, asking those questions. We don't need uh, those answers. So if we we know the answers. Play, the first thing we need to do is put all those saves on one database, uh, which means moving saves, which no online person would ever you know, be comfortable with because you can break yeah. a lot of things. And then it creates a lot of very complicated questions on like what happens if people have the same name? What happens if people already have a save on that other platform? What happens if this? What happens if that? All of that can be solved, of course, you know, uh, and we know it's, uh, it's not impossible, uh, but it is just, it is such a huge endeavor uh, and a very risky one at that. So it's not something that, uh, that seems feasible or reasonable with our team. Yeah, well. Yeah, thank you for the answer. I mean, need, it's not the answer that. that you all guys hoping for, but uh, please, that's we honest. need proper <laughs> questions, man. I wish we could do it. Um, will you address the crashes that have been happening? If we're talking about the uh, deltas, uh, that happened a lot throughout all the three phases of BDS, uh, then yes, absolutely, uh, we made sure to locate to identify the issue behind those deltas and the issue is already fixed yeah they yeah, will they even though we know uh, we know the so answer to that that, that's exactly um, what they're gonna do. Let's go for the best, I right? Mean, it's always the same thing, right? We don't have one fix that's going to fix all deltas. Uh, so there might be new reasons, new issues yeah, happening when no. the uh, update goes live, but at least the ones we have identified from PTS have been fixed. Uh, so if there are still Delta issues the with when the update goes live... Why are people always complaining about PvP, bro? Right? This game is not a PvP a game. They don't care about PvP. It's clear as day, guys. So that's Just give up. Yeah. They don't care about PvP. And if we're talking about... Um, other issues uh, that I won't name here, but I understand probably what this question is about, then those should be addressed in TU16. Sinister, because that's you're going to be right. I watch. With watch. Our live producer, so we're good. We're on that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, let's see what else we have here. Um, will there be another DLC? That's a good question, but they we already mentioned that. that it's going to be year four. So list two more seasons yeah it's uh year four is more seasons more content and our plan for year four is the same model that we've had until now the content is free and the season has a season pass uh, we have no plans to make a big dlc uh in uh, as part of this plan so uh, yeah yeah and there are people That's already asking if tu15 is the last update no it's not the last update no. so we no. can expect I more said that a few times yes uh will you increase inventory storage space i know that you also answered that one on twitter yeah. like 100 times already <laughs> but it's probably a good yeah, <laughs> good thing to repeat me on twitter uh it's probably better for their own sake uh and mine but um so storage space and inventory space, uh, that's also, uh, you know, uh, 
kind of a, a complicated tech one uh, because at the end of the day, what more storage means is a bigger character save for us in terms of uh, saving the data from your account. Uh, and uh, when we made the last upgrade, uh, which was, I can't remember if that was TU12 or a bit before that, uh, we kind of pushed it to the extent that we were comfortable with. Uh, pushing it further means this may have an impact on performances. This may have an impact on you know, loading times. This may have an impact of, uh, on traffic. This may have an impact on uh, uh, connectivity. This could have an impact on many, many things uh, yeah. because just the sheer size of the, uh, the save is going to increase. Um, so it's something we want to be really cautious with. Uh, and the problem is we will always need more storage. Like we keep adding new items to the game and we don't remove items from the game and we don't want to remove items from the game. Uh, so uh, as long as we keep adding more items, there are people who just want to hold and hold on to everything and just make more builds. So more storage is always going to be a, a question. So Survival. I don't know what the solution is. It's not coming, bro. Uh, they said I, it's not coming. I want us to try to find one, uh, but that might be a bit more creative than just saying more storage. There might be other ways out there that we can uh, uh, we can allow players to save uh, to save more things without having to just have more space in their stash. And once again, this is just uh, I don't have the answer to that question, but that's the way I would like to try to look at it with the team. Thank you so much. Uh, that's that's a good explanation. I mean. Uh, technical side, you know. Um, there, is, there is the question that I really like, but I'm just going to highlight it here for Yannick, <laughs> in case he wants to no, answer no, that one. No, we need to acknowledge that. Uh, PvP, yes. Yeah, uh, focus on PvP. Yeah, the question is, will there be a focus on PvP? Uh, you know, we hear, we hear the comments. We, we know that there is a PvP, a passionate PvP community out there, uh, and that are playing either in the Dark Zone or in Conflict. Uh, and there's a lot of uh, conversation on you know, the state of PvP in our game and the things that work and the things that don't. Uh, we don't want to ignore that. And you know, the changes to Shield, for example, is, is one instance where uh, we try to do something because it's something we, we could do, uh, we could afford doing, and that at least addresses one of the problems. There's other problems in PvP. So will there be any focus on PvP? Uh, I don't know because that's, you know, that that's not a matter of just wanting to do it. It's a matter of having the right team to do that. They That's don't it. have the team, uh, guys. The, the team, team left. They have, and it's not just because, but the team they have on the division is a team that is very much built uh, to produce PvE content. That doesn't mean we don't want PvP, but that means, uh, you know, right now, we don't necessarily have the people that can allow Red Storm are doing blood hunt. PvP. Uh, but on the other hand, I, you know, I don't want us to give up on it. That's part of the game. That's something that our players, uh, uh, that our players like and want to engage with. Uh, so we need to try to find solutions. So this is not a commitment, but there will be a focus on PvP. But this is just me saying, N no, yes, no. we know. And yes, we want to try to Heartland. make PvP better. Or Heartland the uh, back. And, uh, and we may try. Uh, and hopefully it will be better, but it's uh, so far we don't have any uh, big uh, PvP 2.0 pass that is planned. If we do it, it's more going to be like we did with Shield, trying to address the main outliers, so the, the bug the fixes. That's the all. Uh, <laughs> that should be done to, uh, a day after try a few the, the things gets here found. And there and see does that make it better? Could yeah. we keep it? No. Nope. Give up, okay, guys. Stop asking try PvP. Something else. Uh, it's so pointless. It's going to be more iterative than one big revamp. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, it's not like we're ignoring the comments and we see them and we acknowledge them. And that is something that Team Constant... I asked them about 5.11 and system mm -hmm. corruption. So What's going to happen with those let's sets? Pray I want to know. Let's have the right person just <laughs> for that. <laughs> but it's, it, it's just, you know, and we have a bunch of recruitments that are open. So it's also uh, something we, uh, when we talk about, you know, rebuilding a team, we are still rebuilding that team. Um, so, uh, so you know, one miracle would be to find uh, to find someone that is super savvy about PvP and could help us. But it's not just that, you know. Uh, it's uh, uh, it's about uh, it's about looking at what's visible with the game and how things work, uh, and uh, and things that might seem simple to address. Uh, this Thursday, uh, when you play the game are actually extremely it complex uh, on our side. Um, and uh, I think and it will. So a huge investment for us to, this uh, week. to change, and that might be why we, uh, yeah, we haven't not addressed it. PvP One of the problems why we are rarely speaking of PvP is because we don't have good news for PvP players. Uh, I wish I could come here and say, yeah, we're going to have a big PvP update, but uh, 
that's not uh, that's not the case right now. Uh, but I hope at least acknowledging that yes, we know, and yes, if we can, we will try to improve and make things better. Uh, I hope is already something you know uh, uh, a right step for the PVP community to trust that uh, that we hear them. Yeah, I mean it's going to happen eventually. We just uh need to sit tight and wait. <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah, uh, as soon as we have uh, news, you're going to be the first one to know. I promise you that. And let's see what else we have uh, there. Um, will there be a new hunter? Will there be a new hunter? But <laughs> no. That would be a spoiler. <sighs> We said spoiler free. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Stream. We just, yeah, he already spoiler. mentioned it, so wink, wink. <laughs> um, there was a question about new skills. Can we have more skills, new skill variations? Um, so far, we haven't planned for it. Uh, we used to, with every new season, we used to give new variants uh, with every season. Uh, we haven't done that uh, for season nine. Uh, the re season reward is an exotic, uh, and one of the reasons why we haven't done that is uh, we don't feel like most of the variants we introduced with those seasons uh, were actually super satisfying. Some of them ended up being just you know, never used by anyone. Uh, there's a lot of variants that exist already, so for now we'd rather focus on those and try to make those better uh, before we start introducing new ones. Um, so, uh, so that's not the plan for the moment. Uh, maybe in the future, uh, but at the moment, uh, the plan is to uh, uh, to not introduce new ones uh, with the seasons. The story mm. continues the end of this Sounds week, good. bro. New manhunt, new and target. There's nothing there much though. New season. There are several questions about April events. Uh, can we have more hunter cosmetics? And can we please wear half with hunter masks? We want more hunter apparel. But I think that's very good feedback, <laughs> and we're definitely gonna discuss it with Polly and the team. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, at least on the wearing hats with um, with mask and all of that. This has to do with the way our characters are built. So uh, currently, yeah, if, pay traps if are we trash, give you a mask and that mask does not allow for a head piece to be on top of it, it's because we just cannot. Uh, it's not. It's not. Uh, it's not a creative choice because we don't want you to wear a hoodie with a hunter mask. It's just because yeah, just watch the, way, the vod, bro. Uh, we can talk about it just now. It just doesn't allow for it. Uh, there are only specific type of mask that allow for... Uh, it might only come, I, I'm not sure, 24th so of May. Of May. So I think both, some of the apparel items uh, come through. There might be solutions we can look at, but it's... Uh, uh, if we if we try to find solutions, it will be for new things we introduce. It's not going to be retroactive. Oh, suddenly the hunter mask can be used with a, with a headpiece. Yeah, definitely. Uh, will you add a new map location? Uh, it's actually what Countdown is for, <laughs> because that's that's a completely new map built specifically for Countdown. Uh, yeah, it, it is, and, uh, and that's something that was important for us with uh, you know with with the new team taking over. Uh, it was an opportunity for them to learn how to make map, how to make content for the game, uh, and how you know how to make it feel like uh, true to the history of the division and the way we used to do maps. Uh, so new locations, new spaces, of course, we will always be uh, looking at adding new ones. But the question is, will there be a new piece of open world like we did uh, New York with, uh, uh, with Worlds of New York? Uh, no, that's not our plan at the moment. Uh, no. But new maps and new spaces that you can discover through different type of content, yes. Yeah. Will you ever add all loot exotics to General Bull? Not locked behind raid. Uh, actually, that's what the new reward track is for for this season because you can get the exotic as a part of the season nine. Oh. Oh, the exotics of that season. Yeah. Um, yeah. But the raid exotics are still raid exclusives. Uh, we are making with TU15, we are adding the chest piece and the backpacks from the gear sets. I don't uh, think there'll be the a new raid. So uh, far, we don't know. We are adding those into the general loot pool. Uh, so the gear sets are no longer red exclusive. Uh, the exotics though are still red exclusives, and at the for the moment we don't plan to change that. Uh, it's uh, I feel like the gear set is already a good step. We don't want to take away all the exclusives from the raid. Otherwise, uh, you know, some people like to play the raids just for the fun of the experience, but others uh, like to play it and be rewarded for it. Uh, and if we take away that exclusivity, then suddenly what what is there to gain to play the raid? Yeah. Um, 
Is there anything else we can entrust from the pool here? Will, will we ever have a postmaster? I see. It's, um, it's a suggestion we see a lot. Uh, and uh, the problem with it is, and that's something that's open for feedback and suggestions, but it's how do you handle a postmaster that knows what loot is interesting for you and what loot isn't? Uh, because that's the problem. Is if you say it's a postmaster, I mean, it's a, you know, a postmaster that gives you access to all the loot that you didn't pick up, and that means you, you already do a lot of inventory management when you finish an activity in the division. And now if we're saying, oh, but now you need to go back to the boot to go to that screen and go through the hundreds of stuff you didn't pick up to see, oh, wait, actually that one had good stats. Maybe I should have kept that one. Uh, that doesn't sound like a fun experience. Um, so, so that's more the question. How can we do it in a way that, uh, that is smart so, so you can filter and say, I just want to pick those items up, for example. Um, and uh, I'm sure there are solutions, but right now it's... Uh, it's not something we've put a lot of thoughts into, uh, and uh, and we could, uh, but uh, at the moment, just because, yeah, it's you need to find a a filter system that just works for everyone, and everyone has a very different way of playing the game and a very different expectation of what is interesting for them. Yeah, and sorting out all the inventory right now, it's already a task of its own. It is. Uh, so it's uh, again, it's. It's something that is solvable, but it is, it's not as simple as saying, oh, I want a postmaster that allows me, uh, gives me a chance to look at all the loot I left behind. Because if you do that, um, you know, the, the, the proportion of time you spend in your inventory is going to be much longer than it already is. Yeah, definitely. And that's not the best solution here. Mm -hmm. um. uh, will there be more legendary missions? It's a... Uh, I mean, it's, I think it goes to the difficulty conversation. And, and one thing that at least I can comment on is the fact that, uh, yes, we know that with expertise, uh, we are going to make players more powerful. Uh, and uh, actually, with the spec revamp, we're also probably going to make players a bit more powerful uh, because we're going to make spec weapons or signature weapons more powerful. So, um, so of course, the question comes up like, OK, but what? If you're that powerful, what's going to be the challenging content? Uh, and so far, the most challenging uh, difficulty is legendary, legendary and the raids. Uh, these are the two main challenges that remain in our game. So there's the question of extending legendary to more activities. And yes, that's something that's on our list of we would like to do. But that's something that it's not just a same. It's not a difficulty you turn on. Uh, it's actually something that is handcrafted for every uh, every mission that currently has it. So. So it takes people with experience with our, uh, our AI, or NPCs, and the combat in the game to be able to look at a mission and say, OK, this is how we turn it into a legendary. Uh, so it's not something that was feasible uh, right now until the team gets more experienced with the, with the game. So in the future, maybe that might be something. And I'm not saying maybe as in, aha, we may do it. Uh, we may have it in the plans already. It's more we may consider it, but uh, it's, uh, it's not something we've put on our plans yet. Uh, but the, the main question is really how do we make sure we create a, a system where all that power you gain, you still have challenges ahead of you. Uh, it's more about difficulty in general with our game. So adding more legendary would just be uh, a bit of a, you know, a bit of band-aid on, uh, on the difficulty question. But at the end of the day, the, the real question is how do we create new challenges for the players that are at the top of the top, and for whom even legendary is not really a challenge anymore. And it's going to be even less of a challenge with uh, all of that. Uh, that's more the way we want to think about it. Mm, definitely. But, um, I think we have uh, time for one last question. So, <laughs> just uh, there's a box of chocolate candies. <laughs> just choose <laughs> one. <laughs> uh, Good question. I can, I can try to just uh, shotgun a few of them. but. Uh, any plans to consolidate the DC Dark Zones? Nope. Uh, but nope. we would like to look at Dark Zone in general and see if we can improve it, but that's part of the PvP conversation. So it's, uh, so it's on the back that, burner, uh, basically. Take some time. Not going to happen. We need the stars to, uh, to align or the planets to align before we can look at it. Uh, any update on anti-cheat and addressing cheaters? Uh, we have a running anti-cheat. I know it looks like we are not banning cheaters, but trust me, we are banning cheaters. Uh, Sometimes they just come back faster than we ban them. Uh, and sometimes it's all about uh, 
constantly updating the unchit. Un ETF, is, uh, with who knows, division three, right? ways people are, are cheating. The reason why we are not discussing it uh, is mostly because we don't want to reveal too much about how anti-cheat works and what are the efforts we are making, because it's not just we have right. anti-cheat, but we have also other things in the game as well. Uh, and also we are not publicly discussing um, people who cheat. We are not publicly confirming if someone cheated or whatever. So if you send reports to us uh, and we are not commenting on those, it's because we are not publicly commenting on those. It's not because we're ignoring it. Uh, so it's they don't have a dev team yeah, for PvP, are, that's why, bro. We are looking at uh, cheaters. Red Storm yeah, left, that's why we haven't got nothing. Cheat, There's no PvP that team. Look like that to you. It's that simple. Uh, it's a PvE game. We used to be so revising, revising the specialization tree. Yeah, we talked about that. Uh, will, the previous, will the season pass contain the previous season's missions? Yes. Uh, yes, that's a model we will keep. So as you uh, play the... the the season and you uh, unlock the season rewards through the, the season track, you will unlock the previous uh, climax missions from the previous seasons. Uh, will you take hardcore mode out of beta? I would like to, and we have a bunch of ideas on how to do that. It's the same, it's a matter of does that take priority over other things we want to do, and uh, these are all things that can move over time. Uh, so ultimately, one day, yes. Uh, when? I don't know. Um, Will there be more directives? Uh, we haven't added new ones with this update, uh, with season nine. That's something we may keep doing, but that, to me, directives falls into the difficulty conversation. So instead of just adding directives, I want that to be part of the general conversation on how do we create challenges and difficulty in the game. Because that might mean we need to change the directive system as well. Uh, inventory stash space, we talked about it. Yeah, I think we covered pretty much everything now. The PvP uh, question again. People asking about the <laughs> canceled uh, nightmare for Kenny College if we would ever bring it back. Uh, no, we will not. We will not do it. Uh, we, we did very little work on it. Uh, we we canceled it early on uh, because we quickly realized that it was just not feasible. Uh, so it's not as if oh, it just needs to be finalized. It would be something we need to completely redo. Uh, and, uh, and that's really not something that is uh, in our plans right now. Uh, I'd it used to be, yeah, but not anymore, bro. I think the game is just at its last legs, like you were saying earlier. Uh, Fortunately. No more questions. You took the screen yeah, away from I me. So. Because, because, I mean, uh, I know that yeah. you can just spend hours answering all the questions, and that's probably what you want to <laughs> continue doing. That's but okay. Yeah, unfortunately, you know where to find me. we're running a little bit out of time, and uh, there are still two other things that I wanted to mention quickly before we say our goodbyes. So first of all, uh, right after the release that is on May 12th, just get the date, I don't know, mark it in red in your mm -hmm. calendars, whatever, just <laughs> ask, ask your boss to get you a free day <laughs> from work. But uh, two more things. If you guys want to bring your friends or family or whoever else to try the division with you, you're going to have a perfect chance to do that uh, this coming weekend uh, because the game is going free on all platforms uh, from May 13th to May 15th. So that's a good opportunity. Uh, if you're looking for uh, teammates, I mean, just uh, mm -hmm. uh, ask your cousin, ask your little brother to <laughs> be your <laughs> supporter in the game. And bring and your friends because the more people play the update and the more it's going to look good to our bosses and they're going to say, yeah, you can keep making content for the game. Yeah, what he what? said. So, <laughs> yeah, that's, I mean, uh, just, just tell everyone. Uh, hit that with with button. <laughs> once the tweet is out there. And actually there were another good announcement. Uh, if you're a streamer or a lurker or whatever, or you just uh, like to support streamers, uh, we gonna have a Twitch Drops campaign to celebrate season nine. And that's what you're gonna get uh, for watching the uh, Division stream if the streamer uh, kind of opted for mm -hmm. uh, to be a part of this campaign all hours. Uh, for one hour or two hour watching, all you're going to get the uh, April uh, cash. And for watching even more, you're going to get exotic caches. Yeah, you guys are going to have to watch so me for four hours. It's all about that exotic yes. cache. Yeah, <laughs> and the rewards uh, can be earned mm. starting from May 12th and until the end of 
every month. So until May 31st. Sabathon, Sabathon. Uh, Should we do a Sabathon, guys? And get some cool rewards. Free She's exotics. gone really quiet. I can't hear her Thank anymore. <laughs> Sabathon. Depends what you want to do with it. I mean, yeah, because people were answering if uh, it's going to be possible to obtain them <laughs> any other way. Yeah, me too, yeah, turn. I can't hear her, guys. Her so mic has gone down. It's not me. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. So that was super nice uh, to super sit nice. here yes. and chat with you and chat with super you <laughs> as well. How does, it, how does it feel to be in this? I need my tequila, spot. my friend. Oh, yes. I mean, it's. I mean, it's you have to watch of, me for four right hours, now, my friend. Thank you. It feels like I'm in the right place. But I'm going to farm summit to on ago, on challenging for four hours. All over the place. Uh, <laughs> oh. 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 Thanks, George. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, George. <laughs> Discreet and all. Uh, so apparently, uh, apparently, Dias Mike is uh, is struggling uh, yes. from all this talking and all this uh, cool stuff. So, uh, so apparently, it's up to me to do the outro, which is perfect because I had absolutely not prepared for it. Uh, but yes. Um, <laughs> can, can you at least show me for one last time so I can wait? <laughs> you can still you can still see Daya. Uh, yeah. So no, I mean, thanks everyone. It's great to be back. It's uh, great to be able to talk about the game. As we said, we have a full year of uh, content. Uh, hopefully we will be able to stream more uh, moving forward, but at least we are available Yay. and uh, we want to interact <laughs> and engage more. So <laughs> please keep the conversation going. Uh, any feedback, send it our way. Be constructive. Uh, be constructive, but, guys. Uh, we all want to make the game better and we all want to keep doing that for as long as we can. Be constructive. So, Thanks for your support. May 12th, TU15 is coming out. May 12th, 24 hour uh, subathon. Watch in. me for Maybe four hours. <coughs> Have fun. I'll do Otherwise, you That's don't get anything, my friends. Uh, <laughs> challenging. <laughs> I'm going to so do challenging summit. Challenging yeah, summit, four soon. hours. With uh, purple gold. <laughs> <imminent. laughs>